culture. I just can't make up my mind. The X-Files poster says the truth is out there, but Philadelphia's own Will Smith says forget the Roswell crap show love to the black suit, so I don't know what to believe. It is a nice suit though, so there is that. Fortunately, it turns out that there is slightly more evidence to go on than just this, and some of it is pretty damn compelling. Of course, when we say compelling, we mean captivating rather than credible. Admittedly, a lot of the eyewitness testimony comes from paranoid basement dwelling stoners or the residents of isolated rural communities where two dozen inhabitants all share one surname. It's not exactly concrete. But hey, credible or not, everyone loves a good story, right? And we've compiled the very best ones for your viewing pleasure. I'm Peter from WhatCulture.com and here are the seven most compelling pieces of evidence that aliens have visited Earth. Number 7. Ancient Images UFO fever didn't really, well, take off until well into the 20th century. Before then, fans of the paranormal were way more interested in whether their dead granny was moving furniture around in the middle of the night. But it's for this reason that some of the oldest depictions of a close encounter can actually be more trustworthy than modern tales. UFO publicity stunts simply didn't exist in ancient times, so deliberate hoaxes were much less frequent, and yet it's astounding how many historical depictions of apparent alien activity there actually are out there. Religious portraits, Egyptian hieroglyphics, even Neolithic cave art. It seems that for thousands of years people have been encountering lights in the sky, strange bug-eyed beings, and sombreros. Of course, there are a few forged artifacts out there, such as the Lolodov plate, but many others are 100% carbon dated and kosher. There's actually something quite unsettling about the thought of aliens coming down to visit us in our primeval cave dwelling days where we all lived in the dark. It's a bit 2001 for my liking, so uh, maybe we should move on. Number 6. Historical Accounts Of course, a couple of old drawings of alleged flying saucers are little more than something to file under P. Cool when it comes to actually proving the existence of aliens. We don't buy into the concept of dragons and angels simply because a man with a paintbrush did a couple of sketches of them 600 years ago. It's much better to have an honest written testimony. Well, how about the documented story of an army of Saxons who, in 776, had surrounded Sigiburg Castle in France in preparation for a grand siege? However, moments before the attack, two large so-called flaming shields appeared in the sky above the church, hovering in place and burning a bright red colour. Upon seeing these strange glowing discs, the Saxons retreated, fearing divine intervention. Then there's the event that became known as the Battle over Nuremberg, occurring on the 4th of April 1561. An illustrated broadsheet article of the time describes, quote, a dreadful apparition above the German city seen by dozens of witnesses. The story goes that a number of coloured globes floated quietly across the sky and then allegedly started to fight amongst themselves. Some of them fell to earth and burned up in intense fires and the whole event concluded with the appearance of a much larger flying object which resembled a great black spear or maybe an imperial star destroyer. Strange stuff. Number 5. Phantom Airships Okay, the historical stuff is all well and good, it's unlikely to be a publicity stunt and so on, but people in the 1500s literally used to eat boar penises to cure pleurisy, which I think is grounds to look at something a little more recent. Let's zip forward to the end of the 19th century, where there was a wave of strange so-called airship sightings all over America, sometimes seen by dozens of witnesses at a time. In November 1896, for example, Colonel H.G. Shaw came across what he described as a featureless metallic craft that had landed in the countryside. Three slender beings approached him emitting a strange warbling noise and tried to forcefully take him back to the craft but couldn't quite overpower him. On the 10th of April 1897 in St. Louis, W.H. Hopkins encountered a landed ship piloted by a beautiful woman and a bearded man, both of whom were naked. Where's this going? Rather than leaving them to it, which just so you know is definitely the best policy when stumbling into a pair of nude aeronauts in the middle of the woods, he tried to ascertain where they were from. They didn't seem to understand for quite a while, but eventually pointed to the sky and allegedly uttered a word that sounded like Mars. Hmm. Okay. Only nine days later, a strange airship reportedly crashed into a windmill in Texas. Locals found a single dead occupant who was, quote, not an inhabitant of this world, and subsequently given a Christian burial. The fragments of the ship itself were reportedly metallic and had strange hieroglyphs on them. Number 4. Foo Fighters 383 years after this kerfuffle, the glowing orbs apparently returned to Germany at the height of one of humanity's greatest kerfuffles, World War II. Axis pilots began spotting strange fiery globes flying alongside their aircraft, utilising amazing speed and manoeuvrability. 
The Germans thought they were some form of enemy weaponry, however they soon began popping up elsewhere in Europe and the Pacific, flying in formation alongside planes on both sides of the war. Allied forces also assumed they were some sort of hostile technology and occasionally dubbed them Kraut Fireballs. Donald J. Myers of the 415th Night Fighter Squadron became particularly agitated by the phenomenon during an evening debriefing, after his plane had been followed by a red orb despite his best attempts to outmaneuver it. Slamming his copy of Smokey Stover onto the desk, he exclaimed to his commanding officer, it was another one of those f Foo Fighters, Foo being a nonsense word that frequently appeared in the comic. The name stuck for the remainder of the war, after which Foo Fighter sightings significantly dwindled and Myers moved on to the Beano. Number 3. The Flying Saucers On the 24th of June 1947, not long after the Foo Fighters had started to take their leave, a pilot by the name of Kenneth Arnold spotted a string of nine metallic objects flying past his plane as he made his way to Yakima, Washington. They passed him at supersonic speed, which he estimated to be well over 1,000 miles per hour, a speed not achieved by human engineering for a further eight years. One was crescent-shaped, while the rest were more like discs. He later described their motion in a newspaper report as like a saucer if you skip it across the water. I don't know why we're expected to trust the testimony of a man who's apparently been throwing his best china across a lake while the rest of us use flat stones like normal people, but Donald Myers' Foo Fighters were finally usurped and a new term for UFOs was born that stuck to this day, the flying saucer. Number 2. The Hills Abduction Despite a handful of initial stories that received little public attention, the first well-known alleged alien abduction was that of Betty and Barney Hill that came to light in 1961. The story begins with the couple driving home late one night, spotting a flying saucer hovering over the road, hearing a loud buzzing sound and then drifting in and out of consciousness until they found themselves arriving home. Upon entering the house, the pair discovered that their watches had stopped working. Barney noticed that his shoes and the strap of his binoculars were damaged and he also felt compelled to examine his genitals, though he reportedly found nothing out of the ordinary. Still packing. Betty subsequently had a number of vivid nightmares about humanoid figures conducting medical examinations upon her. She became convinced that more had gone on that night than the couple could remember, and so they both underwent hypnotic regression. Interestingly, the details that Betty recalled during the sessions differed somewhat to her dreams, but matched up surprisingly well with Barney's own recollections under hypnosis. The couple remembered the craft landing in the road and a number of strange figures leading them aboard to thoroughly examine their bodies. Betty said that the creatures were actually very pleasant and calm, while Barney eventually remembered that they'd handled his back, taken a sperm sample and momentarily inserted a thin tube into his anus. Not entirely sure how you forget something like that in the first place, but we all have our moments. Number 1 the Falcon Lake Encounter. Okay, enough with all the conjecture. People telling these stories might well have honest intentions, and indeed many of them do pass lie detector tests under questioning. However, you'll pass a polygraph test provided that you believe something genuinely happened, even if it was in fact a hallucination or a trick of the light. The real question is whether there are any stories with physical evidence to match up. Well, in 1967, Stefan Michalak had an encounter at Falcon Lake in Manitoba, not unlike those we've already mentioned. An apparent alien spacecraft had landed in the woods where he was prospecting for silver, and he approached out of curiosity. He got within touching distance when suddenly it took off, releasing a blast of heat which set fire to his clothes. He later turned up at hospital with a grid-like pattern of first-degree burns on his abdomen, as well as signs of hair loss, vomiting, and diarrhea. Dr. Horace Dudley of the University of Southern Mississippi observed that the latter symptoms were a classic case of whole body exposure to X or gamma ray radiation. Michelac later took Canadian Mounties back to the site, where a 15-foot semicircle of bare rock was found amongst otherwise mossy ground, and radiation readings were notably higher than the usual background level. Whether Michelac genuinely encountered an extraterrestrial craft is by no means certain, of course, but the physical evidence definitely suggests that, whatever the case, something very unusual took place that day, resulting in pretty severe radiation exposure and almost definitely superpowers. And that's our list. What did we miss? Let us know in the comments below, and remember to like, share, and subscribe.